Hello my friends, welcome back to the Rebel Turner, Rebel Sailor. One of us is at the shop. The this turning is about what do you do if you got something that's way too small to really create something that would be wow. I have a piece of Oh, macadamia nut, I believe. And uh, this was a gift, I think, from Jim Green, who came over and visited and did a turning with me quite some time back. Now the piece is fairly small. And it's three and an eight, two inches thick. And you look at this and you say, wow, I can make some beautiful fin yields. I could make this, I could make that. And yes, you could make a lot of small highlighted pieces for something else. But I wanted this to be the piece itself, to be on display or whatever. So why don't you stick around and see what do I do with this beautiful piece of wood? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is find centers both on the front, the top, and the bottom. So, oops. So when I do that, a lot of times I'll just use my finger as a guide and draw one line on one side, flip it, and draw another line on the opposite side. And if I come up, well, can you see that? Uh, maybe not. But if I come up, there you go, you actually can see it on the same axis, then I hit it smack center right off the bat. Now this way, it's the same idea. Give myself a little bit more pencil, calculate it to be somewhat close to what you think the center is. It doesn't have to be exact. That's the great thing about it. Oh, take a tape measure and calculate it and figure it out. I'm writing the wood against my um, inner finger for the spacing and to keep my pencil high enough to reach. So again, I do that, flip it to the exact opposite side, do it again, and if I have, again, I, I'll be darned, but I can't seem to get the reflection of the pencil, but trust me, it's right there. I hit smack center again on both sides. So that's the bottom or the top, whichever way I decide to go. But to me, that will be the bottom because of this particular piece. So again, the opposite side, it doesn't matter if I'm not smack center. Now there's much more preferred methods than this. And I could, you could say, ah, oh, you're showing off. Again, I did the two sides and the damn line. Uh, all right, so this one I calculate, I estimate, I do my work, and again, I do that, flip it, I do that, and I was actually trying to show that if there's a difference, the center will be in the center of the two that would be different. But I gotta say, this didn't come out too bad. So I want to display this going upwards. So let's get started. And with this, I'm going to start off with a spur drive. Now, you can say, Al, you always stuck your spur drive was in the middle of your chuck. What's the difference on this? None. So actually on this, I'm going to do what I've always done. The only difference is I liked my cheap old chuck that I had that I could actually squeeze it in by hand. This one some becomes a little bit more of a pain because I actually have to use the wrench. And trust me, I don't like 
I don't like to make things any more complicated than what they have to. But anyway, that's locked in there. That's nice and tight. I have my center already. I could make a punch on it, but uh, I don't have anything right now to mark a punch. So with it, looking on an angle. And by the way, I apologize for the background noise, but I got the radio going and I also have, uh, it's also raining. And of course the generator is running and that doesn't help matters any. But anyway, I lined that up as close as I can. It's right there. Give it a little bit of a tap. And the backside I can see very well. So this is going to be a little bit of uh, hit and miss as far as cutting air. And what I want to do, all right, no suspense here, is I want to make a, a small pot face with a square bottom, the way you see it, but I want the corners to be slightly cut. What I want to do is create a small tenon over here, which will be just to the outside of this, and true this up by taking off the, away this chip corner. Although that chip corner is really not a problem because the face is going to have a slight, it's not just going to be a square bottom. It's going to have a slight indent over here and showing off most of this flat part of it, but with slightly rounded edges. So it's not completely square and tapered down to the top. Last video, I mentioned how I would probably show how I use my uh, grinder with this setup. And uh, it's not a perfect situation. But the point that I want to make by showing you this is that yes, you can go with a very grinder Wolverine system or uh, go with a one way, whatever. But all you're trying to do is really repeat the process every time. So I've set up actually a washer so this could cradle up in here and I look at my angle of my blade which is right there. Lock it up. So I haven't set up a gauge for this distance and that's important that I do that. So I'll end up putting something here once I have this tabletop complete. But for now, the way I got it, this is the gap that I need right here. And I run it off the edge because I don't have to swing. But that edge hit me all the way across the uh, face of my cutting edge. So with that, I'm turning turn my tool rest pretty much almost parallel at 45 degrees anyway so I can go in there and work on this without reaching too far over. This is going to run fairly fast but I'm not going to start it up fast. Gradually, gradually increase the speed.
favorite tool to uh, finish off a tenon is my diamond tool. And I've But I'm going to do a little bit, not much, just a little bit of shaping over here. Now I'm going to speed it up. It's going at 1200 RPM. Yeah, on something like this. Stop it frequently so you can see what it is that you're doing. Um, you don't want to keep cutting to realize that you've overcut. That you've overcut and ended up with something that you did not want. But I gotta get rid of this. This is not good, it's not professional. You do that by adjusting the angle of your cut. this mount no I'm going to turn it down a little bit more
<coughs> still, still have to get used to where things are in this little spot, space. I keep misplacing, especially my small tools. I go from inside out. I want to go with a carbide cutter. It gives me a little bit more flexibility and movement in here. I am not partial to carbides, but like I always said, you work with what you got and whatever you feel comfortable with. I have a funny feeling. That I'm going to lose it. Yeah, because it's split in the tenon. So this one, I'm actually going to cheat it then. Refill on the coffee? I still got some. Thank you. Okay. Well, I am just going to go with this bit and go in all the way a little bit past the, the point where it bottoms out for the simple reason that the tenon is not behaving i want to go in four and a quarter and four and a quarter it's right up to the chuck. Then I will shape just the mouth of it.
a little bit of OB shine juice and really not much polishing at all to this piece now one thing me turning on the boat and uh, trying to maintain the dust level down at all times my pieces most of the time unless it's really in need of some help is going to be pretty much just cuts without uh, a lot of sanding This one, unfortunately, the uh, wood grain is not behaving in the orientation I put it in. But to assist me, keeping it in place while I do any extra work, That way, I can apply a little bit more pressure to this. Well, uh, this is far from being one of my better pieces. The, uh, the tenon split on me. So I'll keep it there just long enough for me to be able to get the live center on the other side and take this off.
always a way to flip things around. Always, always, always. You can get vacuum chucks, you can get all kinds of little goodies for the lathe. And if you do, that is all mighty fine. That is great for you. But the point is, you really, if you don't want to spend the money, you don't need to get them. I say that, I've always said that, there are certain things that you do need, there's no doubt about that, but uh, the majority of them are accessories to make things, uh, sometimes they say to, to make things a little easier, but that's not necessarily true. Sometimes things are way oversold to anybody on any hobby, whether if you're an artist painting with a brush or whether if you're an artist cutting with a tool. There's uh, somebody who comes up with some good ideas. Uh, I'm not going to take away and I'm not knocking so please don't take this as a knockdown that you might have bought this or you might have bought that. Uh, with that it's all it's all great, great for you. That is if you can afford it. But if you're struggling and you just want to get into this wood turning stuff, you really don't need 99% of the stuff that they try to sell you. You need one good bull gouge, a, a decent scraper maybe, uh, a couple of uh, maybe carbide tools if you, not that you need them, but um, you know, they're nice to have. Even I will occasionally jump into them. Um, you're late. Your cutting tools, a drill, sandpaper, and your finishes of choice. And you go out and you have fun. Now, this is not pretty. It's not the really what I envisioned. The wood grain only on a flat part shows this. When you get to the cut ends, you really lose that. So that's why I really wanted to focus on the two flat parts so I could see these little dots and all that stuff going up. So here it is a little pot face. The bottom looks good and it will make Fenneman might actually use it from some for some air plants. We'll see what uh, happens out of this. Well time to get cleaning to this mess that I made over here in just a little bit of time. Not too bad out there, but in here, yeah. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on the next turning. Hopefully it will be something a little bit more exciting than this, but I'm always excited to get to the lathe because I'm always excited to see what, how is this piece going to end up? And whether if it's a one of a kind, whether if it's not one of a kind, it's you produce something and you think it came out good, then it came out good. So, don't forget, thumbs up and comment below. I love reading your comments. Those, that's the biggest reason why I am doing this. It's because I love hearing from you. I feel like I know the majority of you almost on a personal level. So let me get cleaning up before Fatima fires me. Whew. Made it. <laughs>